Instagram if I don't tell you on the show. That's it. Uh, technically live on Twitch right now. Uh, hello, Twitch. Before we jump into the show, just a reminder for everybody in the chat here, you can throw your hand in the air if you want to ask a question. There's a little hand emoji on the bottom. Um, yeah, Trufo is demonstrating it currently. Um, or you can flick your hand on and off if you want to join the exact conversation uh, that we're having. If you're saying, oh, well, I want to jump in right now. Please, 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 please. Um, that would be great. Let me... I got a couple questions from the community, Janet, if you really want to get bold nice. about this format and stuff. What are you uh, drinking? I hear you got a little bevy there. Uh, an old brewski. Uh, I got a bubbly. Blackberry okay. bubbly. Are we sponsored by bubbly at all? No, I did. I tried to reach out to see if there's like a Minnesota based thing. But Janet, remind me, let, we should talk about sponsorship in this episode. I think it's an interesting conundrum. Hello, Haley. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, all right, let's get this show on the road. And Janet, you have to remember what you're going to talk about, okay? Sure. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Party Chat, our community Q&A for everybody at the MinMax Council tier. Thank you for supporting MinMax. Thank you for unlocking this show. Thank you for letting my voice recover this weekend and uh, letting us postpone the Give to the Max charity stream. Uh, that was going to happen this weekend, but hopefully you got the message that we are going to be doing it in the future. So we're going to be doing it December 2nd. Saturday, December 2nd is when the big Give to the Max charity stream is happening my name is Ben. Thank you uh, for being here. I'm joined by Haley McLean. Hello. Voice Hello. is crisp and new. It's it's all right. I feel like it's at a level where it can start to deteriorate over time. If we were doing the deepest dive this week uh, for Alan Wake 2, I do feel like it'd be gone by the end of that. Um, which... Someone on that video commented, for something fun, go to the end of the video and then back to the start to hear how Ben's voice deteriorated over oh time. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that was rough. And, like, the weird thing is, it was Tuesday and Wednesday. I did not talk. I was like full monk silence and still then talking on Thursdays. Like my voice was barely intact. It's like, that's a scary feeling to be silent for two days and to try and speak and you're just aerial still. Um, but not the beginning of the movie aerial, more like middle of the movie aerial. Um, we're also joined by Janet Garcia. Spoilers. Hello. Hello. And we're joined by everybody at the Min Max Council tier. Thank you all for being here. You can throw your hand in the air if you want to jump up and ask any question under the sun, talk about anything under the sun. Um, let's see. Hopefully we got the message out. I was, ugh. I was so stressed about the idea of delaying that charity stream because it's just, there's so many little moving parts. There's so many people's schedules to take into account. Um, but thank you for, for everybody uh, letting us postpone that. Uh, we're technically going to get a few more charity auctions as a result of it. Um, and maybe some other bonuses as well that still have to be locked in and whatnot. Um, but it was just like... Relining. Silver linings uh, are probably coming through here, but there's a lot of just messaging everybody involved for for all this stuff. Uh, so we appreciate uh, everybody's patience with that big thing. Uh, and also the big thing was just messaging the deepest dive on Alan Wake 2, how it's like, okay, even though we skipped this week on the deepest dive for Alan Wake 2 uh, because of the charity stream, we didn't want to slot it back in because the charity stream was canceled. So technically we're still picking up uh, the deepest dive in Alan Wake 2 next week. So on Sunday, yeah, Sunday the 12th, we'll have the post up on Patreon looking for your thoughts on the middle chunk of uh, Alan Wake 2. Somebody's asking, is it still going to be a 25-hour stream? That's the plan. And it, when we do it on December 2nd, we're still going to go for the 25 hours. Um, part of it is just we have so many charity auctions that we almost kind of need to make it 25 hours, which maybe that's a lesson for the future of maybe make it two different streams over two different weekends but i don't know Haley. like i don't know how you're feeling about it um but i was thinking about it like you know my voice it technically existed on saturday and i was like oh should i just do like a little stream on saturday and do a couple charity auctions but then i was like you know there's something kind of fun about just like no this is the one-stop shop this is the big event you know like is it worth trickling out in the future for like three different weekends for eight hour streams or something nah, one-stop shop Okay. Totally. Okay. Uh, Janet, you wanted to talk about something before we kicked off the show, and then you said, I got to save it because it's hot content. Yeah. Um, you know, anything that you share is hot content. That's right. <laughs> if you record it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were asking, like, oh, do you think you've changed that much? Like, my Discord mm. pictures from a couple years ago. And I'm like, yeah, like, I feel like I've aged. And you're like, oh, not like barely. But the, here's the thing that ends up happening that my brother had told me about or warned me about. Basically, when you go from like, 
and this happens for different people at different times, depending on your life trajectory. For some people, it's at maybe 18, 19. For some people, it's like 22, 23. Once you transition from your life to paying a real bill, like not just a phone bill, like a real bill, the light mm. in your eyes leaves. And you can see it in photographs. And it's kind of eerie because I look back <laughs> on photos from me in college and there's a distinct light in my eyes that no longer exists. <laughs> and you think that's just the bill is the weight of mm -hmm. financial pressure. It's it's once you have, you know, SoCal gas, people's gas, whatever your gas company is, once that's in your name, something shifts internally and you can't get it back. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, that could be. Or it's just a coincidence. And just even if there is no money pressure whatsoever. Look, here's the thing. I mean, billionaires also look dead in the eyes, right? That's for different reasons, though. Is that right? Okay. So yeah. everybody comes to the same conclusion just for different reasons? Yeah. No, they're, they're just evil. <laughs> is that right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I guess to each your own, then. It is tough. Um, Haley, what's going on? How was your weekend? Oh, it was pretty good. I mean, I moved this last oh, week. My so oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry for yeah. your loss. And also, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was my first time moving with a PC. Holy crap crap that is the worst thing ever in the history of the world is moving a pc i hate that was like the worst thing what i don't understand because, what you're talking about is you have to be so delicate with it is that the idea i guess like my the place where i was moving to was about a 10 minute drive so it wasn't that far but like we i wanted to do one trip just moving my tower because i didn't want to have to wrap like put it in bubble wrap and blankets and stuff just because it was you know moving a little far like i wasn't putting it in a truck or anything but then all my wire management, like I worked very hard to make my wires really pretty. I bought stuff off Amazon to make them all flow into each other perfectly and nicely. And just unplugging that all felt like I was stabbing myself in the heart. I was like, oh, this took hours. But I figured out kind of a, like, I just put st uh, duct tape on all the cords and put the number that they plugged into the back of my tower. And that probably saved me an hour of like figuring out where everything went. So it was a little life hack. Oh, God. Is it, um, I feel like the last time I moved and every time I've moved, I've made the commitment of, I can never do this again. I always underestimate mm -hmm. how much of a pain in the ass this is. It's the worst. And we went to Canadian Tire and bought like the big totes or like bins, mm. you know? And so we're like, we're not going to use boxes because we actually have storage at this new place for the first time ever. So we're like, okay, let's just have a ton of bins and they're all going to go in the basement if it's not stuff we use every day. And that's how we did it. And that did help but it's still uh, moving is up there of like my least favorite thing in the world potentially i hate moving is it um you know we're we're looking at houses yada 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 and my wife had an interesting point recently where she's like she's like i need to be so excited about the house i'm excited about moving like you never want to make a move in your life where you're not yeah where it doesn't feel like a step up living situation wise do you feel like your your move here was a big a big leap it was a jump up for sure. Like it's a nicer spot. I was in a basement apartment, which you could probably tell because it was always so dark in my apartment yeah, all yeah. the time. I had to have so many lights on. So I'm above ground. Wow. <laughs> I'm 30 years old and I can finally live above <laughs> ground level. That feels good. <laughs> and new, like nice new appliances. Like they clearly renovated this place like only a couple years ago. And the last people that lived here were a really super cute old British couple. So they like took good care of it. So it still looks very nice. And yeah, it's just like my dog loves it because she can look out windows now, which mm. like makes my heart happy. And we're in a way fun, more fun neighborhood. Like I took my dog on a walk and before I was kind of like, I was close to my university and I got lucky and got like a relatively affordable uh, apartment in like a rich, richer area of my city. But yeah. I didn't like living in the richer area because no one like hangs out outside or like talks to your neighbors or whatever there's a different vibe but we're in a different neighborhood now and everyone's so nice like there's one lady that has toad facts written all over her house and she's the toad lady i've learned and she's apparently like the nicest and you just when you walk by you could just read about toads and she has like a million little toads in her garden and i'm like i love this this is human beings not just like houses and it's made me really happy i don't know it just just changed my mood a lot Toad people are human beings. Wait, is she like just takes a sharpie to like the siding of her house? It's like she has this big wooden fence around her whole house, and then she just has like attached a bunch of ceramic toads and frogs and stuff to the side of it, and then has written in like with nice lettering. It's not like a crazy person, like toads can live for 12 years, <laughs> like something scratching into the wall. She like painted with nice letters, like toad facts, and, and like writes them out. I'm like, this lady just loves toads and wants us all to 
know it. Like, what a cute lady. I just love people like that. <laughs> oh, that Appreciate sounds, her. That sounds wonderful. I'd like to visit uh, your city at some point, Haley. I'd like to invite myself up to Canada, if that's okay. <laughs> Our city's really nice, actually. Like, I, I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and it's we get so many tourists. We're like the the cruise ship city. All the cruise ships land here. Oh. And my old place, you could actually hear the cruise ship's horn. So, like, the Disney one that was like, da, na, na, na. I'd be, like, in the middle of a meeting. And, like, a huge Disney cruise ship would just be blaring what? in the background. Um, but, yeah, we get so much tourism. And a lot of people are like, we love it here. We want to move here. But now we're having a housing crisis. And it's actually, like, very sad. It took us seven months to find this apartment. Whoa. Which was, yeah. And, like, I'm still renting. I don't own anything by any means. Just because I think I saw someone do a TikTok talking about the housing market in Canada right now. I think you have to make over $150,000 a year to possibly afford a home in Canada right now. Like, that's, like, people who make between eighty and and hundred twenty k, which is a lot like that's a lot of money and it, you can't afford a house like nope nope not happening it's nuts here right now Heesh. and what's the reasoning for all that well it's hard to concisely say but our government isn't very good at ensuring that there's housing um for the amount of people that exist in our country um a, a lot of like ignorant people try to blame it on just immigration like okay. like of course immigration is going to do that to any community but it's not just because of immigration it's because we have these huge corporations buying properties from out of country and out of province and then just consolidating those into pro like interests for them and then they sell you know renting them out and since the everybody can't really control that market from within our province. It's all owned by exterior companies. They all are just raising up rent prices to astronomical amounts to the point that people can't afford to live in the city anymore and are leaving, like, en masse, people that grew up here and stuff. Uh, yeah. Do people, like, get off the cruise ships and just, like, flood the city for, like, weird periods of time? Yes. I used to work at a clothing shop that was t 10 feet from where the cruise ships got off. The questions I got were amazing. Like, oh my God, Americans are y'all so funny. Like what? Like, like, just I would say, okay, well I'm we scared. don't accept we don't accept American money, so I'm gonna give you change back in Canadian. And they're like, ah, uh, this money is real. <laughs> they thought our money was like monopoly money, like that, like really. And I was like, no, this is our. They're like, it's blue. This is this is fake. You're lying to me. I'm like, that's what? our money. <laughs> they, they didn't think it was real. And then <laughs> another person thought we were. What, what did she say? She was like, oh, we're on the island where the Titanic hit or something. And I was like, <laughs> what? And I was like, well, no, like we have a history of the Titanic because a lot of stuff washed up here and the survivors were were like delivered here, but like it didn't hit anything here. She's like, that's the island. It's like, there's an island called George's Island. She's like, they hit that island and the Titanic sank. She's like talking to her kids. I was like, what <laughs> are you telling your child right now? That's not accurate. Just like stuff like that. I'm like, where do you think you are right now? An iceberg? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think, I mean, most of Canada is just an iceberg right it's just an iceberg that kills oh. people in the atlantic and then forms land no genuinely people will get off and be like where can i find the nearest moose to take a picture i'm like you're in a city <laughs> you're in a waterfront city i'm like uh probably alberta <laughs> <laughs> probably across the entire country on the other side or they'll say is it a long trip to get to new brunswick which is like the next province over i'm like yeah it's gonna take you like 12 hours <laughs> to get to the the place in New Brunswick you want to go to like they just think everything's like nearby and like all the provinces are an inch wide it was funny oh boy uh Janet if I was a monster and I'm not doing it I swear but if I was a monster I'd pop quiz you on Canada's provinces right now oh no I don't know any of anything okay. in Canada oh good oh, like good. the only thing I know about Canada is that there's um you know Toronto and uh Vancouver because of soccer they have two MLS teams oh. there, the Vancouver Whitecaps and uh, I forgot what Montreal's team is called, but that's all I know. And yeah, that's um, Niagara cool. Falls is right next to like Buffalo, cause like it, it's like they like share the falls basically, you so you can it. have like the American side or the Canadian side, and then the Canadian side has like little Ferris wheels and things. That's all I know. <laughs> and Steve <laughs> Taylor lives there. <laughs> It's very humbling as a Canadian to grow up and realize none of the other countries <laughs> know about us like at no, all. No, but. America doesn't really know, like, we don't hit geography super hard. At least we didn't when I went to school, which yeah. isn't, like, a total defense because I don't know a lot of stuff that they did teach me. But, you know, like, I feel like our geography skills are pretty rough. I, I feel and like ever it, since I stopped playing uh, Geo Safari World on that globe, 
it's just been downhill for from from there for me in geography. I mean, they they taught us these things in geography classes. We forgot. I mean, it's you tell me we went over all the provinces in Canada. We certainly did. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, well then, never mind. I guess. Well, surprise! Guess... It stays different for education, Ben. <laughs> Fair yeah, Minnesota is pretty Canadian coded. Like y'all. So. Like I remember when I was living there, I was like, this is I, this is Canada adjacent for sure. Uh, speaking of which, what's the, what's the give me the skinny on Winnipeg because I, I don't think I've ever been there. And in theory, it's the closest big Canadian city I could drive to. Um, and we have like a couple friend and, um, is that how you say it? Friends who are in a couple <laughs> people, we have some friends. Um, and they went there and they were like, oh my God, Winnipeg is the best. We loved it there, it was so great. And I just frankly didn't believe them. But then again, I, I'm easily impressed. Can you give me the skinny on Winnipeg, Haley? What's the reputation for Winnipeg up there? I mean, I've never been to Winnipeg. That's in what? Manitoba. That's so far away from me. <laughs> Damn it. That's like the opposite side of the country for me. <laughs> all right, never mind then. Do y'all have like parallel cities? And by this, I mean like, if I said like, what's Canada's New York? Like, do you have an mm. answer for that? Or is it- It's Toronto. Is the gap not the, or like, do you all not have like, what are your stand standout like cities? Uh, Toronto for sure, and everyone always assumes Toronto is our capital, but it's not. Um, because of it's Drake, because like, <laughs> of Drake and and Justin Bieber. Actually, Justin Bieber I think is from outside Toronto in, in Ontario somewhere. Um, but no, kind of just Toronto. Like Vancouver's as close to like a California vibe as we have, which makes sense. It's on the same coast. Like that's about as close as we would get to in LA, and they're not at all synonymous. But you know, if you know what I mean. But that's the closest we got. And Toronto's our New York, I guess. Seattle, and I guess that, Vancouver is your Seattle, right? Sure. <laughs> That's our Seattle. Yeah, like or I can only Seattle. learn of the culture through the lens of the Americanism <laughs> that I have. I'm like, how do and you then, make this about me? <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it, Haley. I got it. Uh, Ed, oh, okay. Edmonton is your Dallas. Yes, accurate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I think where I'm from, Halifax, is kind of the, like your Boston vibes, but like immensely smaller. Like that would be the closest. All right, that, that checks out. Mm. That's exactly right. Shrug, uh, like kind of. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, let's see. Uh, who who dares? Michael Berry wrote in to the podcast a while ago. We didn't get to the, their question there, but I thought it was an interesting question that no one else wanted to answer. But this is a great spot for it. Michael Berry wrote into the podcast and said, "I wish VR allowed you to revisit more places that no longer exist. For instance, there's a local water park called the Beach." It is now forever closed, but I absolutely love a VR experience or a tour of it. Virtual tourism seems like a fun angle that I do not think has been properly done. If legal issues were not a concern, what nostalgic place would you think would you think make a fun VR experience to visit? I like that question. Blockbuster. I, a blockbuster. Oh, good one. That's good. Yes, yeah, stores from like early two thousands. I would love to walk down the aisles of a blockbuster. Yeah, that'd be such a Feels weird something. thing. Give to me a candle pitch. that has the smell of like the, like the plastic <laughs> and the carpet. Yeah. Yes. Find the right odors. I do think there's something to this though. Of like, hey, here's you can see the VR version of the Eiffel Tower. It's like that's one thing, but it's like here's a VR experience that's your bedroom from your childhood. Uh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like you could turn on the TV and it's just all those old channels. Like I think there's. It's so particular. I don't know how to do it other than if you have a game that's just 90s bedroom simulator. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> they have that game. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, it's a game. It's a VR game where you're in a 90s bedroom and Shut you can up. pop in the games into like an N64 or a legally distinct N64 or SNES or whatever. And you can play games. From, it's like also like an emulator. So you, you're playing like on a CRT, like a VR CRT. Oh my like Mario God. Or That's amazing. Something like that. Yeah, you're exactly right. It is literally called 90s Bedroom Simulator. That's so sad. Now, the question is, Ben, here's the thing. I'm, yeah. it, gotcha journalism. Are you now going to play it? Because you claimed a <laughs> second ago. Oh, man, I would love if this is okay. It, it's yeah, there. It's right. ready now. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I expect to hear your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I, I am playing a lot of VR. Uh, and I, I was trying to take recommendations. Uh, on Twitter for like VR experiences that I definitely need to check out now that I have a MetaQuest 3. Um, but I haven't, it seems like Pistol Whip is number one for a game that I haven't played that people strongly recommend. Uh, there's stuff like Moss, which I played a little bit on PSVR and I do think is cool. Um, so I guess I can, I can check that out there. But does anybody else have any VR recommendations? 
VR makes me barfy, and I really wish it didn't because I think VR is so cool. But I just get, I just start to feel a little weird. Like I played Moss yeah. as well, and I loved Moss. I found, I found Moss not too bad because at least I was stationary in the place I am, and you yep. just look around down at the environments. But as soon as it's like jankily moving forward and your body's getting juxtapositioned shoved in a direction i'm like Bleh, and i start feeling really weird yep yep i i also have a tough time with it where i just is, need to be um, really careful about the games that i choose it is it like the formative quest where you like it can play everything like it's all backwards compatible <gasps> it is backwards like compatible okay. but i mean if you want to play half-life alex you need a cable to run it to your right. computer yada 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 um what the golf if you haven't played it is like one of my favorites well what the bat no, what, sorry, what the bat, yeah. Okay, right. yeah, yep, I, I like what the bat. I mean, a lot of these I played on PSVR too. People, yeah. multiple people were recommending Walkabout Mini Golf, which oh. I, I, is that the one that it has like the course that's themed after Mist? Like I know one of those weird VR games allowed you to play on the Mist Island, but a mini golf version of it, but like a licensed version of the Mist Island, which sounds very good. Um, Side question: Is Mist just like a Nancy Drew game? Because I got that comment a lot uh, when I was streaming Nancy Drew. It was like, uh, Haley should play Mist, Mist, play Mist. But if, is it like very? I haven't Googled it. I've never played Mist, or I even know what it looks like. Well, I haven't is played that just a, a Nancy Drew game. I haven't played a Nancy Drew game, but I'd imagine we can meet in the middle here. It's it's probably like a Nancy Drew game, but more like cryptic, atmospheric, subtle, you know, sound of water lapping on a shore as you're trying to figure out some logic puzzle type of thing you know oh that's yeah totally nice true vibes okay yeah uh it's a classic uh, janet i assume you're not a missed person uh, i don't i with Haley, i didn't know what it was i just have heard it a lot it's yeah. like a really old game right yes yeah from the 90s yeah it's like one of the games. old head bangers it's like that and mm -hmm. like like Monkey's Island and like you had to be there, you know. I'm like, oh, I don't I had to have been there. It was the best looking. Unless y'all think I don't know, maybe it's fire, but it I, I don't know anything really about it. Um, it's it's unique. It's it's certainly it it stood out to me in the '90s as just because it had so much personality and so much atmosphere, and I feel like more than any other game I'd ever encountered, just felt like this is this is a whole object. This is a universe, and this is teasing some story that's bigger than I could possibly imagine. So it's a, it's a really cool game. Um, the and art looks cool. I have, I'm have i starting to develop uh, nostalgia for slightly newer art styles, which I hate that because it's like I feel the passage of time now. Ooh. Like looking at like PS1 graphics and I'm like, something about those ridges. Like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> No, yeah, when we're playing Cream of the Steam random games and just playing some PS2 inspired thing, and it's like, okay, this is it now. This is, this is peak nostalgia for me. Um, yeah, what about that, uh, Haley? Uh, they ask about, Michael asked about legal issues uh, in terms of replicating VR experiences of your childhood and all that stuff. I mean, that's the big hurdle, right? Yeah, probably just having like trademarked items in the rooms and stuff like that would be a concern. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of what else might be more than that. Um, I know, like, no, nah, that wouldn't really be. I was thinking about how the Pokemon Go game had problems with like trespassing like it was encouraging trespassing which oh, i think is sure. really funny <laughs> so they had all those things that's like do not go in an area that's not yours with like a snorlax there <laughs> to try to like compensate for it when they were getting in trouble for that but that's not, that wouldn't be a problem there I, I would imagine it's just like having if you want to look as accurate as possible you probably have to have a ton of trademarks like all over the place uh, and then to put like fake ones kind of defeats the purpose because you're like this yeah. isn't my childhood this is my childhood in a different universe like miles morales where the logo is slightly different <laughs> yeah yeah but i do think there's something like you know without spoiling loki season two there's a weird weird number of people that are really into the idea of them rebuilding this mcdonald's from the past because they're making like a 1982 accurate mcdonald's mm. um and so I do think there's something with that VR idea of like, you know, that'd be such a weird, but kind of a cool experiment if a company like McDonald's paid for a VR experience that was like, you could jump through McDonald's stores through the era. I, I mean, that'd be cool. It is weird to be nostalgic for just, you know, this corporate place that you spent a lot of time in your youth. Ooh, but Kmart. Like, Kmart, yes, absolutely. So yeah, that, are, that brings up problems where like just my brain is trained to think of at the worst case possible for any like idea and shut them down which is like awful but what if somebody used those layouts to like plan their robberies <laughs> and they used it as a tool to like figure out the best ways in and out of a McDonald's or something to from 1982 
I don't know. Maybe it, like that would be the thing. Like if it was only old buildings that no longer are sh designed that way, right. maybe. But like as soon as you attribute to something that has more l risk, like a like imagine if they were doing that to like an old bank. <laughs> And it's like, oh, God, they have the plans for a bank to practice their robbery in VR with each other <laughs> before they go in. There's just like always like some random thought that could pop in your brain and be like, what if the worst person in the world used this for bad purposes? And that's what? like what you have to think about. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm the worst person in the world. I don't think I have bad purposes, but I do want an experience. And I don't know if it is in VR of like. <laughs> All right. Hear me out. I remember a while ago I was thinking about how this would be a cool game to try and design. Uh, I, I want a game, VR would be great for it, that's just a full recreation of the White House. Like, isn't it weird that that doesn't exist, that you can't, like, walk around a VR version of the White House? I feel like that is that's awful. Like that's Haley's thing. <laughs> that's exactly what, Yeah, there's probably a very specific reason, because they want to make sure no one knows the layout of the White House to get to the president easier. I mean, I'm Unfortunately, not... Unfortunately, a lot of people got to know the layout of the White House. Like, well, yeah, that... On a certain date in January. So. <laughs> I mean, they didn't go to the White House, Then where you were you on? No. Oh, yeah, they didn't go to the White House. <laughs> they maybe <laughs> thought they were at the White House, but they weren't. So, okay, so at the there's an official site here where you can do, like, a Google Street View for the White House. Look, at, I'm walking okay. through the White House right now. Guys, I'm in the White House. Does it walk you inside? Yeah. Um, oh, wow. So I don't know how thorough it is and like when they cut it off and whatnot. I but... mean, as long as it's as, as as limited as the tour route, you know what I mean? Like, you know how in yeah, person they that's do less fun. That's less fun. Don't you, you want to? You want to peek yeah, behind the doors and like have them yes. I'll let you like look at the records room and stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay. Specifically what I want and I think it'd be fun, maybe in poor taste, but hear me out is I'd want a VR game that's in the White House, but it's a ghost hunting game where it's like, the ghosts of the presidents have run amok. You gotta vacuum it all up, Luigi. And then you just <laughs> run around and it's like, look out, uh, James K. Polk is coming through the wall right now. Cause you'd learn like a little bit of history. You'd learn the president. I think where it'd be in poor taste is it's like, and now DLC with Jimmy Carter coming in hot. You know, it's like, you can't really do it. But that's my dream VR game. So if somebody, uh, if that exists, uh, please send that my way. Maybe it's like the 90s bedroom and it's already ready to go. Yeah, Janet, now's where you find that exact game again that's already been made and Ben has to <laughs> play it also. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, this, somebody else also wrote in, um, who dares disturb our slumber? Uh, Martin Glowacki, and they say, hey everybody, the NHL season is starting up this week. This was from a while ago. I was wondering how many of you can ice skate? Oh, uh, no, I'm very um, bad at I can, ice skating. I can do it a little in a technical sense. Like, I put on skates and did it a few months ago, and I was able to move without falling. Okay. But I, I wouldn't say, like, I'm an ice skater or anything. I just took what I knew from roller skating and tried to move, and it worked. Yeah, it's got to feel similar enough. Yeah, it's actually, it's it's weirdly, like, easier because um, it's a blade instead of, you know, a quad. Right. Um, but, yeah, I can, I'd like to learn more. I think it'd be fun to take lessons and, like, get kind of yeah. good at it. It is, it is fun. It's definitely scary. Like over the last four or five years, I've been ice skating in the winter. Um, I used to have a rink like right next to my house that was just outside and that was my lunch break is I would just go over there That's and just nice. uh, skate in a circle for a while. What a like, whimsical 90s movie style lunch break. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. And True. then I would yeah go rent a hot new release from Blockbuster. Um, and so now I have a rink that's a little bit further of a trek, but uh, I, I still, last couple of winters have gone over there over lunch breaks and just skated around a bit. But I also, the first time I went over there, I of course fell because there's a lot of falling involved because I'm not graceful at all. Um, and I like messed up my finger and I still feel like my finger is still slightly messed up from it. So I'm, I'm scared of it, but I do like doing it. Uh, and Haley, I'm sorry, is it just a cliche to be like, oh, the Canadian, you're on top of it. <laughs> no, I'm bad at all Canadian sports. I can't ski. I can't skate. Um, but I have a similar injury with my elbow when I fell off a horse like 10 years ago. And I swear to God, I still feel it every day in my elbow from that one fall really? so long ago. Yeah. Oh, God. Does it stop you from doing anything? No, it's just like a weird like if I have it kind of sucks that now I just sit at my desk and work like that's like my job. <laughs> but yeah. if I just lean my elbow against my table too long, I'm just like, oh, there it is. Like when I fell off spruce in <laughs> 2009 or whatever like there it is again Cruise. um we had this show in the new show plus uh docket 
at some point. I forget how it came up, but the show is just called, and this isn't for this week, to be very clear, but the show is called Horse Girl Tower of Death. Um, yeah, that needs to happen still. Yeah. I'm very excited for do you, that. Do you have any new thoughts on what the show is? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any co-op, like, Wii Horse Girl games, because the Wii was the best era for Horse Girl games. Like, let's be real. Like, yeah. you, you're the nunchuck and the remote are the reins. The games write themselves. It was like the perfect time to be a horse girl gamer. And I think they're all first person or like uh, single player ones, though. It's just like, you have a farm now and your name's. I think they were always, always named Sarah, too. Sarah was lucky. I feel like every little girl game, the girl's name was Sarah. Um, and it's like, oh, now you have to learn how to look after the horse by brushing it with the remote and stuff. But we need to find a good co op game where we could right. like do a jump off or something that might be fun who is the quickest at a jump off in an old horse girl game yeah or like yeah some competitive horse girl games i was googling it and there's nothing jumping out here as an option but yeah i think that getting some wee thing would absolutely be the way to go yeah uh bucket of jello writes in uh over on patreon this day i recently beat world of warcraft classic hardcore by hitting max level without dying once me and three buddies leveled together and did every leveling dungeon as safely as we could. It was nerve-wracking, chill, fun, and monotonous all at the same time. It'll probably be my best gaming moment of 2023. Now I'm playing Moonstone Island per Midmax's recommendation. I'm having a blast. Oh, good, Bucket of Jello. Uh, I asked for, like, hey, people write in with what you're playing. Um, I love that idea of just uh, beating World of Warcraft classic hardcore. Um, <laughs> did anybody pay attention to BlizzCon over the weekend? Yeah, there's some Overwatch stuff that got announced that I was interested in. They announced like a they're they're completely reworking the competitive, um, like gameplay style, uh, which for the better because they really, I think we were talking about this on the podcast once. Like, what's a game that got ruined by its sequel and it's Overwatch too? Yep. Yep. <laughs> they're like, we're changing everything and everything was worse and it's just like, oh my god, like competitive was awful. You had to win five games or lose eleven in order to like move up or down the competitive scale. And so if you went on a losing streak, you just had to lose 11 in a row before any kind of update happened, which was the most demoralizing off. Like, it's just, it just wasn't fun, right? Like, and now they've completely revamped it, and they announced, like, three new characters, which seem cool, and they're all kind of unique and have new abilities. Like, it seems like they're trying again, which is nice, and they just got acquired, but these all seem like things that happened and were planned before that acquisition. But yeah. I'm interested to see if that game kind of changes its vibe now that they've been purchased. I mean, how much of it is the vibe? I mean, as somebody who played a boatload of Overwatch, do you feel like just everyone was so sour on Overwatch 2 that it was tough to have yeah. fun with it, even though at the core it's still pretty close to Overwatch? It's It still plays like Overwatch, but it's just everything surrounding the the pl the playing of Overwatch changed. Like, they got rid of a tank, which is fine. Like, so now it's 5v5 instead of 6v6. Yeah. But now it sucks to be a tank, because you have so much responsibility and then they to compensate with this they like tweak the supports to be op so like historically no one wanted to be a support because you're just he like healing right but now all the supports have all these unique game breaking abilities like one kiriko can just throw this thing down on the ground that cleanses every single ultimate except for like two so it's like oh you need a kiriko now because she's busted and it's just like there's not a lot of for a game that's about like switch it up if you're getting diffed like the, switch up a character have a whole new kit it's like it, it kind of feels like you need to just run these things over and over again or you lose and mm. then even if you do lose over and over it it sucks because the competitive like way that they're running that doesn't work matchmaking was absolutely atrocious at first like i was playing with I, i'm only in platinum which is kind of like middle of the road and i was getting like grand masters in my game i'm like why are, why is this genji who's a god, like <laughs> getting 40 limbs in my game right now. And then that's a loss and ruins my win streak and I can't update my competitive role. It was just like a bunch of stuff like that. You're like, oh, this sucks. Like this just isn't fun, even though it plays the same, technically speaking, as Overwatch 1. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, do you think you're going to go back and check it out now with announcements over the weekend? I have, st I do still play it. Like it's, it's also like we were talking about comfort food games in our morning meeting. It's a comfort food game, even though I like complain about it. Yeah. Like I have a, my best friend Michael comes over all the time, and that's like our game we'll play together. It's just like hop on Overwatch, and we've been playing that since 2016. Seven years, like that's crazy. But it's just one of those games that I think we'll always come back to, even though it's just so different from where it was in 2016. But like still Overwatch too, you're playing a boatload. Yeah, I, I play it every week still. 
Whoa. For sure. That's wild. Um, yeah, with uh, BlizzCon over the weekend, they, they launched Warcraft Rumble, which is the mobile Warcraft game that's a little bit like Clash of Clans, I guess. Um, but I tried it, and I just I was not interested. I mean, it's kind of Apple Arcade has, has soured me on if I'm playing any other free-to-play mobile game now. I'm just waiting for the hammer to drop, even if it wasn't very clear in, like, the hour that I played Warcraft Rumble. You know, like, oh, put your money here, put your money here. It's just, like, it's still this nagging feeling that, like, at some point it's all going to go south. Um, but, yeah, it kind of... It's just weird seeing where Blizzard's at right now mm. as, like, you know, some of the greatest game designers in the history of the industry. And now, you know, they were all purchased by Microsoft because they're some of the greatest designers in the gaming industry. Um, and Microsoft really wanted, wants to get into mobile, right? And it's weird seeing, like, all right, they just released a mobile game, which should be some of the greatest designers with, in theory, one of the most, I don't know, opportunity-rich um, places to play on mobile, um, and still, it's kind of like, eh, eh, not so much. Um, but maybe maybe it's taking off in a huge way that I'm not aware of. But, Janet, have you heard any rumblings about Warcraft Rumble out there? No, oh. not really, but it's it's not my, like, lane. So I yeah. feel like that's not unusual. And I, I don't think I have a lot of people in my circle that would be, like, chiming in about it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just weird to see, like, yeah, Microsoft buying Activision and Blizzard you know, obviously king for the mobile stuff, but it's just it's just weird to see like them buying these studios for their expertise and then it's not really coming through with what the studio's doing as of now. You know, I think of it's tied into the larger discussion about Sony and Bungie and the day of like, all right, we're the masters of the living game. And then they're purchased because of that. And now the news that like eh, maybe Marathon isn't hitting as much as they want it to as an extraction shooter. So that's delayed to 2025. Thanks right. to Bloomberg's reporting. It's like it's even even the best in the world. Um not always a guarantee. Um, I'll be right yeah. back real quick. I'm going to grab a package at my door. Sure. Um, Haley, also, they announced uh, the new World of Warcraft expansion, which is called The War Within. Uh -huh. um, but the weird thing is, at the end of the trailer, it says, like, uh, World of Warcraft, the world soul saga. And so they're, like, taking a cue from uh, the MCU and making it, like, every expansion is now part of this larger story. So they announced the next three expansions technically for wow and that's all comprising the world soul saga is it retroactively incorporating any pre like wow lore into this or is it kind of like a here's a little sub chapter and all the lore is held over here in this little section no i think it's still continuing that storyline but just kind of like having some connective thread instead of just every couple of years be like i don't know miss a pandaria here's this thing here's this thing here's this thing it's like we're trying to build larger arcs now um, Why is it always Mists of Pandaria? That's always the first one I think of too. The panda one. And I think yeah. actually, that was funny because I'm watching the Twitch stream right now I know, too. I know. A panda appeared on the bottom. There's probably a reason because I'm also seeing that. And so maybe I that got to, if I had to name one expansion for WoW, it's the one that's uh, tidying in the pandas. And I always think of Mists of Pandaria because visiting Blizzard for the Warcraft 3 um, remake that we did as a cover story at Game Informer. I remember it's interesting talking to the Warcraft 3 remake designers because they said that artistically what they were looking at for inspiration was Mists of Pandaria. Because like that was kind of like peak cartoony abstract Warcraft art. And it started to get a little more realistic after that. And I so, like the timeless art. I like mm -hmm. yeah, like I, I like the before. Yep, yep, for sure. Um, and I know World of Warcraft is in a tough spot and they brought in some old Blizzard talent to help out, but I don't know. It, you never want to be the person who's uh, giving the benefit of the doubt to Blizzard um, and being like, hey, you know, they've had a rough couple of years for a ton of different reasons. Yeah. But I was, I was just thinking about, like, the fact that people are sour on World of Warcraft right now. It's like, it, yeah, it's 2023. This game came out almost 20 years ago, and people are like, oh, they're not even able to keep it alive. It's like, you know how freaking hard that is to keep a game alive for 20 years? It's like the Simpsons equivalent for video games, for sure. Right. Yes, absolutely. They just need some some big new YouTube essay to be like, no, World of Warcraft's good now, you guys. The, world the day Soul World of good. Warcraft died. <laughs> Uh, we should take a call. Everybody else, you're welcome to jump in, throw your hand in the air if you want to talk about anything under the sun. Uh, let's see what Kyle S. would like to talk about. Hello, Kyle S. Hey. Hey. How you doing? What's happening, Hello. Kyle? Uh, just wanted to ask for an update about uh, what's going on for your Thanksgiving roast. 
Oh, if that's coming along, if it's happening this year, or if writing has been treating you well. Yes. Uh, great question. Yes. Yeah, so every year, this is a tradition. It's maybe like seven years. I don't know how long we've been doing it. Um, but going back to Game Informer, where uh, sorry, I have to answer a call. I'll be right back. Okay. Where uh, the Jeffs, um, Jeff Cork and Jeff Marquia Fava, and then we've added Leo Vader the last couple of years, where we just write a bunch of middling jokes about gaming in the year and it's reasons we're thankful for gaming in the year. Um, and so, yeah, more than any other year, Kyle, I have been writing jokes throughout the entire year. Like, I don't know, is there an easy way in Google Docs to see like how many, let's see, like how many individual lines I have, but just for frame of reference, these aren't gonna be good, I wanna be very clear. But technically right now I have a Google Doc that's nine pages long of jokes that I've been writing throughout the year for this event. I think probably four are gonna be usable, but worst case scenario, we'll have a bunch of leftover um, bad jokes that maybe we can get to, to some of them. But have you contributed uh, some of the jokes in the last couple of years where we let the community submit them, Kyle? Uh, no, I'm, I, I don't feel comfortable with the, you know, having my jokes been put, put or my joke attempts be put on the, light like that okay yeah it's but I have funnier people like uh bob you know <laughs> have some jokes in there i know i know bob's contributed a bit yeah yeah a lot of a lot of good jokes are coming from all over the place so yes we are going to do it we literally were just locking down the schedule this morning um so it'll be up presumably the plan is to put it up on that wednesday the week of uh thanksgiving so on the 22nd i guess is when the big jokeathon, and the plan is we're going to try and do it from the studio, which we haven't done in person since 2019. So I think that'll be that'll be a fun fun twist on it. So thanks for caring about uh, those those bad jokes there, Kyle. Yeah, just funny, wholesome somehow, and yeah, it's just great. You know, just I, I like seeing you guys swap it up. I don't know if you guys are sticking with that or I think so. I think that is the, the joke. I think that is a more fun way to go is to randomize it for everyone. And like, since we're going to be in the studio together, the plan is like, we should just literally print them out and then just pull them out of a hat. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that'd be a, a more fun way to randomize it. Cause it's, it's kind of a tough thing to randomize it and dole it out like digitally over Slack, yada, yada, yada. Um, but that'll be the plan for, for the big thing. Uh, let's see. Someone, Sarah Ripley says, is it sad? Someone saying Thanksgiving makes me crave, Oh, I thought you were saying something else. Makes me crave Thanksgiving food. No, that's not weird and sad. That's that's how it works. I've been craving Thanksgiving food for a good long while now. Even just yesterday, I was thinking about how much I'm looking forward to that. But thanks, Kyle. Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, no. Keep keep things up. Oh, I actually I did want to mention. Uh, props to Janet. I I uh, bought two of the books that she's featured in this year. Whoa. A handheld book oh, trans nice. video game of the year. Oh, that's Although cool. I, don't, I don't know what you've contributed in the handheld history, nothing is like quoted from you the same way you have in Video Game of the Year. Yeah, handheld um, history. God, I wrote that a really long time ago. I think we had that be kind of innocuous in the sense that I think it was like a big listicle thing. It was. I wrote that so long ago. Yeah. I think I feel like something with the GBA was my contribution, but it's tough to remember because it was. I feel like I wrote it like a year ago. I see. I get it. <laughs> well, hey, Kyle, thanks so much for your support. Appreciate it. Appreciate it as always. See you guys. All right. Bye. Uh, Bob Buell, you were summoned. He mentioned your name. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Welcome, Bob. Oh, good evening. Well, it only felt right. Kyle brings up the topic. My favorite tradition of the year, giving thanks. Oh, yeah. The jokes, the whole thing. What if I told you, Mr. Ben Hansen oh, and no. Janet and Haley, um... I made a top 10. Oh. I made a, a top 10 of the 10 best jokes that you have told over the last seven years. Whoa. All right. Love it. Uh, uh, oh, I have, God. I have a lot of honorable mentions here, and I got to be <laughs> honest, this was way tougher to chop down to 10 than I would have thought. Uh, no offense, but uh, there are a lot of bangers in those old episodes, so Oof. I highly recommend people go through those. So you went through and you rewatched all of them? All of them. And it's been seven years? Uh, yes, I think this is going to be the eighth. Oh the earliest one I have here is 2016. So, okay, that's bananas. Quick uh, math, yeah. Okay, Janet, uh, if you're not hip, uh, yeah, for a long time now, we've been just writing mediocre, I'd call them mediocre, <laughs> barely mediocre stand up 
or kind of late night monologue style jokes about what we're thankful for gaming that year is the idea, Janet. Um, and we do not stand by any of these jokes, uh, but it is kind of a fun challenge to try and write them. So, all right, Bob, I mean, take it away, man. Do you want me to play the music right. or you got it or how you doing? Oh, I, I think I got, unless you have like David Letterman's top 10 theme, I think. Uh, oh, I was going to play, I was going to play the Thanksgiving uh, music here. Oh, it'll, it'll be there. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Take it away. Uh, so uh, this is this is my ranking, uh, number 10. Okay. I'm thankful that we keep getting more and more and more time with Jeff Keighley. I'm surprised he hasn't been canceled yet with tweets like, who's your favorite Muppet? What do you predict will get nominated for Game of the Year? And the things I've seen, dot, dot. This <laughs> <laughs> just in, milk dropped to position in the spiciest white thing. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Kirk. Really good. Really oh, good. I thought you were going to read them, Bob. This is completely different of actually playing a clip. This is a production oh. level I could never imagine. Oh, come on now. This is, it gets the hype level up for this year. Oh my God. Like All right. Love it. I do feel like by rewatching them, how often did we repeat jokes? <laughs> um, directly, not that often. Okay. Uh, there were some there were some years that there were like constant through lines in people's jokes, but straight up repeat them not not often. I feel like Jeff Cork repeated at some point, and I'll paraphrase, but yeah, he made a yeah. joke about having to remove your ribs so you can do yeah, something. the Marilyn Manson, <laughs> the Marilyn yeah. Manson rumor thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, that, that popped up a couple times. That's always a crowd pleaser. Uh, okay, number nine. This is so self indulgent, but thank you, Bob. <laughs> uh, number nine. I'm thankful for CD Projekt Red. Hey, CD Projekt, Gwent and Thronebreaker? We didn't want to see these projects. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's number nine. Damn. <laughs> this is truly, that's, anybody can do it. It's, it's all out there for you, people. <laughs> uh, 2018's finest. All right. Uh, all right, number eight. Uh, I'm thankful that 2018 saw the announcement and release of Borderlands 2 in VR. Uh, why stop at 9 million sales of a game when you can have 9 million 200? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember writing that, but that's all right. I love the Leo in the background laughing. Yeah, that's really <laughs> what's sustaining me here. I left in the little the little titters of laughter at, uh, at the end. Yeah, because it's, it's rare uh, that we get the titters. Normally, it's just a quiet nod, and that's about the best <laughs> we can do. Uh, here we go, number seven. Uh, I'm thankful for DICE, who showed how much they care about the Battlefront community by temporarily disabling the features designed to exploit and extort the Battlefront community. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all these are pretty time sensitive to, what, Battlefield 1's launch or some nonsense? What are you, you're all that up on 2017's <laughs> hottest headlines? <laughs> all right, no, it's good, it's good, I love it. Uh, here we go. Number six. Dragon's Dogma 2 was finally announced in true Capcom fashion with a shirt. Hey, Jeff Cork, I hear you're announcing a pizza stain for 2026. <laughs> <laughs> that's confusing because I think it's got layers. <laughs> it is because I think that's when we, we that's from the era when we started shuffling them. And I think I, I think I might have written that joke. We're never supposed to reveal. It's supposed to be anonymous. But that feels because as I was reading, I was like, wait, that, that feels like my joke. But now I know why. <laughs> so, OK, love it, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, here's a, 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 a quickie one from 2018. Number five. I'm thankful that Capcom made a Monster Hunter game that didn't cater to crazed weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Norm McDonald delivery. Crazed mm -hmm. weirdos. Yeah. What okay. game was that? That they Monster Hunter World. Yeah. That's the one that doesn't. Ca okay. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 We're, yeah. We're aware. We're aware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep it. Keep it rolling, Bob. What do we got? All right. I'm a little thankful for Watch Dogs Legion myself. A AAA developer taking on an unprecedented risk for the sake of pushing the bounds of game design forward is a truly special moment but they didn't perfect it in one go, so I wish the developers were dead. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. That's a Leo joke. That does feel like a Leo joke, for sure. Yeah. 
It, is fun I, I did, it, it was a fun exercise to like listen to the shuffled up ones <laughs> and being like, oh, that's a cork. Yeah. That's a, like, I don't care who reads it. That's a cork. Yeah. Yep. Like, yep. Absolutely. If it's, yeah. Yep. I won't give any tells, but I do like trying to decipher mm-hmm. all that. I feel like Jeffum is normally in the poo poo pee pee category more than I Jesus. thought he would. <laughs> Uh, all right, number three. Make this out, stupids. <laughs> I'm thankful they didn't make that GTA movie starring an Eminem. They're going to make a GTA movie. It should star me because I'd be going crazy in that game. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's the dumbest <laughs> That's got to be Leo? I have to imagine. Yeah. yeah. I, it, it does feel like Leo. Uh God. All right, number two. <laughs> I'm thankful for Morbius for letting everyone on the internet think that they're funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also strange enough, Leo. I think that's a Leo and Leo joint. Yeah. Now, I have my number one here, but I have a couple, uh, you know, uh, special nominations here, honorable mentions. Do you want to do you want to throw a couple of those out here real quick before we get to one? Uh, depends. Janet, how miserable are you? Is this what you imagined oh, uh, yeah, being I'm a party sorry. chat would be like? <laughs> This is about what it is. It's more roasty than I thought it would be. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Good. The only difference. But yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah. It's about what You're I thought. You're good. Okay. Um. Yeah. We'll take some honorable mentions. Sure. All right. Honorable mentions here. I'm thankful that when I defected to MinMax from Game Informer, no one had me killed to protect the many dark and sinister industry secrets I hold. <laughs> it's pronounced Nintendo's witch. <laughs> That's barely a joke. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. How many? Right. How many bonus uh, ones you got? I mean, listen, I, I, I had too many, but I'll okay. only give you a couple here. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. I'm thankful we got another entry in the awesomely named RBI Baseball series. Joining my other favorite sports games, free throw percentage basketball and minutes played soccer. <laughs> <laughs> that's Solid. that's Jeffum. That's Jeffum if I've ever heard it. Really good. Uh, <laughs> my, there we go. 2018 classic. I'm thankful that I'll probably live to watch the old people who've devoted their miserable lives to making the world a worse place die one by one of natural causes. <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jeff Cork. Just, just perfection. Okay, we... All right. One, one more honorable mention. Okay. And then we got the, you got uh, it. The you got it. Hey. They're always saying hindsight is 2020. You guys heard this? Hindsight's 2020? But I'd say 2020 is more like the sight of a man's hind. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Truly impeccable <Top> rating. <laughs> that kind of sounds like a you one, Ben. Yeah, I don't want to comment. I think that was me. Uh, that's 100%. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's really, it's really dumb. Kidding me? Yeah, if it's lazy wordplay that's trying to sound like Norm <laughs> MacDonald, that's typically a sign that it's mine. <laughs> Uh, all right, Bob, number one, what do you got? Number one. Thanks to the Disney Classic Games Collection for giving me another reason to grit my teeth and say, I like this still. The <laughs> 90s ruled and I will grow up when I'm in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that one nearly made me spit out my water <laughs> listening back. God damn. Uh, yeah, those are those are super fun. Um it's it's always a blast. Like I've I've always had the tradition of like going to a coffee shop to write those, and it is, it is just it, it's a fun challenge because like I, rarely in my life do I sit down and try and write something structured like a joke, and it's just you fall into the same ruts, and then you realize you've written ten of them, and you go back and look at it, and it's like these wouldn't make me laugh. I guess <laughs> in my mind it's like a joke, but it doesn't work. And like, I remember there's one comment one time where someone's like, I think these guys are funny, but like. This isn't funny. This is the way they put it. Like basically, I was like, I think these guys are funny off the cuff, but when they're trying to write stuff, it is painfully unfunny. Where it's like, yeah, I think that's hopefully that's part of the charm. It's like it's hard to write jokes. Well, this is like funny. Leo's thing, where um, if the game is dumb, but at the end they're like, we wanted it to be dumb. Yes, now right. the game is smart. Right. So that is always the the twist. Is like, how much do we build this? As like, I mean, it is. I don't think anyone's pulling a punch. Everyone's trying to write the best joke they can, but it turns out writing like a monologue style joke it's kind of tough to make it actually funny how do y'all so how do y'all collect these again are they all just written besides the community ones written by like 
y'all who are reading them. Yeah, yeah. So typically the four of us will write 20 or 25 each and then randomize it. And then we'll get some from the community too and mix them in there. Yeah, it's, um, but also the thing that I worry about with the structure of it is like, sometimes with the randomizing structure and stuff, sometimes like the punchline is deflated if it just happened to be someone else just wrote in about an Elon Musk joke, you know? And then if the next joke, the punchline is Elon Musk, which I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of that crap this year. I mean, a How lot come of that... y'all don't just read your own? We did it in the past, but I think, I forget why we changed it. Bob, you just you watched You wanna it. own the fact that your joke is bad. I think is it's a why? little bit that. <laughs> um, Bob, do you remember why we made that twist? Uh, I think it was also partially because of the community ones and you wanted to kind of like have a way to pepper it in. And so you're like, why not pepper all of them in everywhere? Yeah. Um, also, I, I think yeah. Leo had a really good suggestion last year, maybe that it's like, maybe everyone holds on to like five or whatever. Yeah, like that's good. if you think the delivery has to be done a certain way, like hold on to your five and then all the rest are randomized. That's, that's smart. Um, let me write that down so I can remember. <laughs> Hold on to personal five. Yeah, because there's some of them where like people are reading it for the first time. It's just a mess. Um, okay, sweet. All right, Bob, thank you so much. Uh, we've taken up too much of your time. Sorry you had to go back and look at all those, but we appreciate it. No, I had a, listen, I had a great weekend listening to these things. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Looking sweet. forward to the next one. Bye. Yeah, bye, I am bye. too. All right, thanks, Bob. Bye, Bob. Um, bye. Alchemist, do you want to jump on up? Sorry to make you wait so long before you can jump up whenever you get the chance you can jump on the stage um janet have you ever tried writing a joke um no but i started jotting down some just because i was curious to replicate the format just now this year yeah whoa okay what have you learned uh, in that process so far um it's i'm thankful for something backhanded compliment y yeah <laughs> that's exactly it yeah yep i'm thankful for something let me list two things and then one mean thing uh, it's, yeah. a lot, it's a lot of a lot of similar stuff there. Uh, well, Alchemist, you can jump up uh, whenever you get that uh, invite. <clears throat> um, special shout out! I wanted to thank uh, Jawar Hello uh, from the MinMax community, who uh, they've done it a couple times now, but it's always great. But we have um, like the biggest Patreon tier we have is called Play Games with Us, where you can choose any game in any cohort, and not on a stream, but just to privately play a game with us and talk for like an hour. So I had a good time playing Mortal Kombat 1 on PS5 with Jawar Hello. And he was, it's funny because before it, he was kind of worried. He's like, I haven't played for a couple weeks. I don't know, I, I might get stomped here. I was like, dude, Jawar Hello, I haven't played since it released and I lost uh, frequently in the campaign on very easy. So like, you don't gotta worry, but he just mopped the floor with me, but it was still, I, I still really like Mortal Kombat 1. It was fun just to, you know, he, he mentioned, he's like, oh, you should build this more as like, it's just an hour of like a private conversation uh, with somebody, which is true. So that's an option. Uh, just, you know, everybody, Patrick Polk, who's here, uh, he's jumped in and we've played a bunch of uh, Puzzle Fighter and stuff. So that's still a Patreon tier option if you want to try that out, everybody. It is genuinely fun. Like, you know, we've had other people be like, oh, I don't understand that tier because it seems like it's just kind of annoying for you to have to do. But like, no, it's, it's, a, it is a delight to get to talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody from the community and it's kind of like an extended party chat where I feel like it's a lot of therapy sessions of me just kind of like asking, like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What do you think about how we're doing this? Blah, 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 blah. Um, like I talked to Jawar Hello a lot about like sponsored content and the limits of sponsored content, which I understand is a larger, larger discussion. Um, Janet, Haley, how are you feeling about <laughs> the ethics of sponsored content at MinMax just to really put you on the spot? <laughs> like sponsored streams? That or type like of thing, yeah. Um, I think it's pretty chill when it's like a product. I don't think there's lots to think about outside of the, um, <laughs> that's kind of lots to think about the ethics of that product within like a reasonable amount. Um, yeah. There's obviously the argument that pretty much every company is bad in different ways, but I think <laughs> sure. if we like, like the general company, like the product, all yeah. right, you know, things like, you know, liquid IV, stuff like that, where it's like, oh yeah, like it's pretty innocuous. Yeah. I use it. I like it. I use that kind of thing. Cool. Chill plug. I think when it's a game, it's a little bit awkward in a sense. Outside of like, I think I'm 8-bit. It's more of like the product aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's a cool company. But when it's like streaming a game for sponsored content, I think it's overall fine as long as you disclose. But I do think yeah. it, it creates issues that you could avoid. So it, you kind of just have to weigh like, how much do you care about that? Which I've also weighed individually where I'll do, whether it's, sponsored content or um, my behind the scenes like mock review stuff that I, ne I rarely get to disclose at all. It's yeah. like, okay, well I'm taking this knowing that I can, 
I am limited now what I can do yep. critically with the game potentially. Yep. Um, I do think it's also a little different when it's like MinMax company versus MinMax individual. It's like kind of interesting because there's the company voice, but like if you know what I mean, like I might yeah. not be on that sponsored piece of content. So like, does the audience still feel the same way if I'm speaking on a, a game that we theoretically did a sponsored let's play for, but I wasn't on that. Like, yeah. does that mat? you know, it matters, but then like, does it matter less? Like, do people care? I think that's, those are the kind of questions that run through my head for it. But yeah. holistically, I don't think I'm, I don't personally feel like it's a hard no, but I know a lot of, you know, content creators or journalists or critics that choose to draw thicker lines for that mm -hmm. reason. Yeah, those are all uh, good points for sure. Yeah, it's like, I think where I'm at is like, at first I was like, oh, absolutely not. Um, I think I'm warming up a little bit more. And just to be frank, like we've had a couple offers recently. I don't think either of them are going to happen. But it was a couple where I was like, wait, is this the level of sponsor? I mean, this this feels like a no-brainer. Like, it doesn't feel like we're selling out to promote some stupid mobile game, Clash of Dragons, yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I think... It's like I never want to get into a situation. <laughs> I'm not pointing fingers at any other outlet, um, but I don't want to get into the situation where you can say it. <laughs> I I think we all know who we're talking about. But I feel like every once in a while I see other outlets. They do a stream, and I'll have a moment of like, "That's a weird stream," and then I'll be like, "I'll click through and be like, okay, it's sponsored eight ways to Sunday." And so I don't ever want to have that situation of like having people see content pop up on Mimax's YouTube channel, um, and have them be like why are they doing this or, or question if it's sponsored like if we have like a weird idea for new show plus you know for example like you know shopping at ikea that we did last year or whatever like i don't ever want that instinct of the community to be like okay but they were paid for this right like i want to keep a little bit of that pirate feel but you know people I know we give way too much free corporate sponsorship we should start massively blurring everything like Smart. that one boxer who is like what are these on the table? Did they pay to be here? And he took like all of the Coca Colas and different things. He's like, you got to pay if you're going to be up here. Like, oh, yeah. Situation. Uh, you know, people in the Twitch chat, and I'm curious, you know, to hear community feedback as the point of bringing it up here. Um, people brought up like Trivia Tower, how that sponsorship uh, seems to be working out well. And it seems someone said it was frictionless, which is nice. And that's, that has worked out well, where it's like, so far we've only chosen games that's like, oh, these seem kind of cool. You know, like the first one? No, well, the first one was, oh, forgive me, I forget the name of it. <laughs> That's probably a bad sign. Um, but the second one was like Humanity, where it's like, oh, Humanity seems cool. You know, we like Enhance. I'm so confident that game's going to be solid, even though it technically wasn't out yet, you know. I think I, maybe I was even playing it. Um, and so that was an easy one to like slot in. Um, and so, yeah, I'm glad that the Trivia Tower sponsorship is, is working out well for folks. It doesn't feel too jarring. And like, it's a nice thing to be like, oh, and then you automatically get a code for this if you make it to the third floor of Trivia Tower as well. Um, so it doesn't, there's some free benefit for the community as well. Um, so that's it's things that are in that vein. You know, like we had, um, just to pull the curtain a little bit back, like we had somebody reach out recently, a company, and they're like, hey, would you promote this game? in a show is basically how it worked. And I was like, well, we can't do it for the MinMax show because we're locked in with Audio Boom for doing ads there. And they're like, oh no, it's just any any video you upload on this date, if you just put a 60 second ad for this game in the middle of it, you can name the price of how much we'd pay you for it, was the thing. I was like, oh, I have no idea what that price would be. I'll try taking a stab at it. But, you know, without $1 revealing- One million dollars. One million dollars, yeah. Um, I did name a price, and then they got back if to me. If you don't tell me your budget, I'm giving you a ridiculous rate. <laughs> right. And seeing if you'll let me get away with it. It's, it, it was kind of that philosophy where I'm like, well, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to float this number. And they got back to me. They're like, oh, we're going to go in a different direction. So I assumed the number was too high. Um, but uh, Cowards. No. I'm <laughs> I hate when people don't give a rebuttal. It's like, just if you're broke, sure. just say that. Well, just tell me, tell me your limit, you know? But at the same time, the part that I, I'm driving towards is like, the game that they're promoting is like, a game that's on the horizon that I think all of us are agreed upon, like, it's going to be a good game, you know? So it's like that weird thing of like, oh, it doesn't feel like selling it at all just to be like, hey, they want you to know that this game's coming out on this date, and we're all feeling confident that this game's going to be rock solid and find its audience. Um, so that is that weird level of like, it still feels weird promoting a game, but if it's so clear that it's sponsored and we can silo it off, and it's the type of game that's going to be good, but I don't think would have made the two tens anyway, so like that factor isn't really there. Um, Haley, help me out. How, how do you how do you navigate this? <laughs> um, I guess what I'm thinking about right now is there's a difference between like embedded ads and then like ads that would appear on the platform in which the content is being delivered. And it seems like people are okay with ads on the platform, but not so much in content. Like mm. 
And I think there's unique ways to get around that and to like in incorporate it in natural ways. But ultimately, I think like what you and Janet are saying is like if you like the product and it's good, yeah, and you're happy to put your stamp on it, I mean that's that's the the line of quality that you're you're putting in your content to make sure it's not just like random ads people are getting bombarded with like that are things that you wouldn't otherwise potentially even play yourself if we're talking about video games. Yeah, I think that's about as much as anyone could ask from a content a content development company that is delivering you free content constantly. Like there has to be some kind of line there. And I think any normal human being would be like, yes, understood. Give me some ads because I want you to keep doing what you're doing and making money and, and you have a baby. Well, so the baby needs food. <laughs> baby can eat money. Um, yeah, but also it's like, is it is it free? Because it's your Patreon, you know, it's like you can make the argument that like, yeah, we're paying you there so that you don't have to sell out. You, that's true, but I don't know. I think anyone who has existed on the internet for longer than a year understands how this works. And as long as I, that the company is providing that line of quality of we're only going to, our ads are only going to be focused on things that we, we think are good. And we think yeah. that someone out there might enjoy, maybe you would be benefited by seeing this ad potentially, not just anything that we could grab and chuck on here. I think that's kind of a nice compromise to someone getting ads, but at least their quality. Yeah. By the way, there's some Discord yeah. troubles. I'm trying to invite Neil up, but it looks like it's not working. It seems like people are experiencing some glitches. But if you get this, Neil, you can jump up. Um, yeah. It, you know, there's also somebody else reached out uh, recently um, with like basically like, hey, could we pay you to make a video about this game? And it's the type of thing that, you know, I always just feel like as long as I'm not lying to the community and it is extremely clear that this is sponsored content, it was a situation where they reached out like, hey, would you make a standalone video about this game name your price and it's like we probably are going to make a standalone video about that game anyway and so mm. that's kind of it's a weird spot but then it's like well then if we do it i just don't want an asterisk in the 210s discussion you know and so that gets tricky and that's the part that uh, i definitely would love some feedback on but no matter what the default is yeah we're not going to promote garbage and we're always going to be completely clear um, I think as long as the disclosure's there, like I get yeah. your hesitation to be like, oh, but then they'll know that it's like, you know, we were paid to play or whatever. But like, ultimately, that's something I learned while studying journalism in school is just like, you need to disclose and let your audience decide right. whether or not you're biased. And it's like, all you can really do is disclose and then just not be biased and, in your delivery. Right, and it's, right. it's you kind of have to like, let it go a bit, which sucks. Cause it's like, you almost want to say at the top of the, the, the discussions, maybe like, by the way, we were paid for this, but we already disclosed that, but it's not going to, you know, and then it yeah. almost feels like, why are they bringing it up so much? Hmm. It's like an impossible line to, yeah. to master. Mm -hmm. But I think as long as the disclosure's there, everyone's on the same page on what happened and now we're talking about it in another context, it's yeah. just up to you to be like, ah, it's not influencing me. I'm going to talk about this game right now and just yeah. like whatever you say, you say. Yeah. I will say though, the other side of the coin is, is like if you want to avoid that, like you just don't do it. Yep. Like that's the yep. only way to fully avoid yeah. that. Yep. Yep. True. But at the end of the day, I mean, there are going to be people that, I mean, there are people that say that now and we don't get anybody for anything. <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying right. that means you should do it. I just mean like you... It has to be your own comfort level and what you're up to. And obviously us as a as a staff, you know, again, more mm -hmm. peek behind the curtain. I think we talked about this on previous party chats. But even when we had like the deal with I forget what's the name of the company that does our ads? Audio Boom. Audio Boom. Like, you know, you brought to us like in our meeting, okay, what kind of things like are you into or not into for like these different companies? And we like yeah. talked about the stuff that we were down to do and the stuff that we weren't down to do. So I definitely think that would need to be like an outlet conversation yeah. because yes, it does. Like there will be people that think that like that is an absolute fact. And even if you think it's unfair, your actions allow for that thought in a sense, yep. like you yep. open that door. Yep. But like, Good I don't point. think that means that like it's right for people to make those uh, like claims, but like that just is the reality of the optics of it. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, Neil Smith, what's happening? Hey. hey, yeah, I didn't want to interrupt because I didn't really have a lot to say about that. <laughs> no, um, that's I guess right. I do kind of, I am kind of curious. I did have a question. Um, have companies ever covered your travel to an event? Yeah. Yep. Uh, for okay. the, for previews, uh, preview trips. Um, hopefully we mention that. I believe we've mentioned it every time. Um, but okay. we should definitely, should definitely make sure we're in the, in the practice of that. But yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, I was under the impression that they had. Yeah. Um, 
is that different than taking money for advertising? That's a great question. I, I mean, don't mean to put too fine a point on it. No, nope, but... nope. I mean, it's absolutely a fair question. You know, like I, you know, after so many years of traveling for Game Informer, where for a majority of the time, you know, we paid for our own travel and stuff, um, but going on those cover story trips and stuff, like I always tr was trying to be militant about that idea. Of like, well, you spend two days with the developers, but then when it's time to talk about the game, you got to be true to yourself and so i'm sure everyone has this sense of pride in themselves like i'm not influenced but of course everything is subtly influencing you at all times you know so i do think about like god did i like mario and rabbids more because i went to that preview trip like it probably mm -hmm. didn't hurt you know like it, it, spending that much time focusing on that game that probably primed the pumps for them when it came out it's like oh i i know this game already and I, i'm really enjoying it um and the people who were showing it are specifically trained <laughs> To, to be, deliver yes. to you in a way yes. where you like it more. Wait, like, Haley, that's... are you saying that I'm not the best video game player in the world and that when I found <laughs> that thing, no one else found? Right. That someone else indeed found it? When they clapped when I did the thing that yeah. didn't make my heart beat a little faster. When I, I got stuck and they myself. said, don't worry, everyone gets stuck here. That was a lie. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like the, the line too. And like we got it on the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth preview trip too, where like before we played it, they're like, just so you know. You guys are some of the first people in the world to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Like that line, I feel like could be used over and over again because it does make you feel yeah. special and, like, and more ooh. connected to the game. Now I'm um, looking forward to that game. Thanks a lot. Yuck. I think um, to that question, I mean, some people would argue that they are the same. Yeah. I would say there's distinct differences. Um, just a few yeah, to name off the top of my head are you could, if you go too far in that line of thinking, you could argue that like everything we do is promotion which some people kind of argue that that is true and, sure. and in a way like i do my criticism because i like the art of critiquing and i like conversations around video games but there are a lot of people that turn to my content or our content for like what game should i buy mm -hmm. is this worth my money should i you know whatever right like in a way uh, you could you know a cynic could say our, you know, I'm on kind of funny as PS I love you. Like, is your PS Plus review not just an ad for the thing? I'm like, well, I guess if we say it's good in a in a way, you can think of it that way. But that's obviously not why we're creating the content. We're creating it to evaluate right. it because we care about following that ecosystem. Right. For the preview stuff, to me, I think me paying for a flight somewhere to preview a game, like if you're in bed with the preview, like that already is the that you know what I mean. Like I don't think, oh well, now that I had to pay for my own flight now that removes that like you're you're still going to be at the event you're still going to get you know a sandwich for lunch if they provide a lunch that kind of thing i do mm -hmm. think though as the industry has shifted away from the hyper whining and dining you see less lavish preview events which yeah. i do think as much as it's not gonna lie it is fun to do like funky stuff but some of that is a little you know cheesy and corporal right yeah. it's like do you need to take me in a hot air balloon to play this game on the Switch. It's like, is that not mm -hmm. part of more of the wine and dine than the content? I would argue that it is, you know, and that's, and I think from an individual standpoint, that's where you might do stuff like, one thing I always thought was weird, like I get why, because they want you to have like a good time, but like sometimes I'd go to a preview event and a lot of my events, I don't get paid to go at all. I don't get accommodations because I live in LA. So it's like, well, there's nothing. Like right. I just Uber over and they don't usually pay for my Uber to be honest. Um, but there might be like, oh, we're having an, a, a, a drinks beforehand. I'm like, the day before we play the game, like, I don't want to drink with the people who made the game the day before I play it. Like, I think that's a little awkward. Like, it just is weird to me. I, even yeah. just doing it after, I feel like would be less awkward than doing it before. And then like, that just, it just feels uncomfortable socially to hmm. me. Um, but yeah. Um, it's tough. So I mean, it's, as long those as just... things are just kind of always in the ether. But I don't, I think if you're gonna, if you think, if you think that about previews, you probably just think that about previews because like inherently they're they're pre showing you the game because they want you to write and get content out about the game. Yeah. Um, and they want that so more people know about their game. I want that because I want to talk about the game. So we have kind right. of different motivations. In my opinion, that's kind of the difference of it. Yeah. Uh, Neil Smith, sorry, did you have another uh, question? Yes, actually. The uh, reason I called in, uh, raised my hand. Um, is because Janet's on the call and she mentioned on an earlier thing a while back about starting to maybe get into coffee a little bit. And I was <laughs> curious if there had been any developments in that direction. Yeah, I'm working on, um, I think I finally have the ratios down where the coffee doesn't taste bad, kind of. Because I thought it tasted pretty good the first time I made it. And like we had some, there was some de internal debate on whether or not that coffee tasted good oh. <laughs> from the people who drank it. Um, 
Yeah, so I've, I've been doing that, and I have um, the grinder that Sarah recommended to me, which I'll oh, try to pull up. It's the same one she has. It's, like, slightly bougie, but nothing too wild. I, I, the messages don't go far back enough. Um, I forget the brand. It's, like, a 100 bucks or something. Um, so I have that, and I actually was on – I feel like I didn't promote this on Twitter. Like? Um, I don't know. It's tall and it's silver. I forget what brand it is, so I really can't, like – Does it um, have a motor? Yeah, I think so. I'm okay. a little dumb, so I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> no, 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 I'll exactly. put well, it I mean, in the um, – if, if you what? plug it into a wall. Yes, I plug it into a wall. Okay. okay. That is true. Um, I'll I'll drop it in a – what's a good channel for that, Ben, to, like, good drop eats. that into? Mm, yeah, Good Eats. Oh, yeah, Good Eats. Good, good Eats. So I'll drop that into Good Eats once I grab it. But um, I've been doing that, and I've been rocking with – I got a bunch of beans because I did – which like did I do the show for the beat? I didn't do the show for the beans, but they gave it to me at the end. Um, I did a podcast um, with this uh, guy who runs. I think it's called like Charlie Coffee Company that he's like starting up. It's like a little LA thing, and he like invited me onto his show. He's like talking to people in like kind of the arts or like that do like interesting content and like doing like a, a hot ones but for coffee. And at the end, he gave me a bunch of the beans. And that's when I was like, <laughs> I'm going to take this free coffee and turn it into a bill of a $100 grinder so that I can grind the free beans I got. Perfect. Perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused by the phrase hot ones, but for coffee. Isn't the fundamental premise of hot ones that you become increasingly uncomfortable as the interview goes on because the wings get worse and worse? Well, the wings get hotter and hotter. Here, there's no scaling. Also, it's Charlie's Coffee Co. is the name of the company. Okay. Um, it's just different coffees from different ones. So that's like the difference part. It's not like a super okay, bitter okay. bean. Like that's the part that deviates. But it's more of all a just, coffee like, flight. Little questions. Yeah, it's like a coffee flight. But the format, you oh, know, it's I like, like a, that idea. It's like you're sitting at like a little table. It was like fun going to someone's like little studio where I'm like, oh, this is like a little more than what I have going. Like it's always I get a kick out of people's in person. Yeah homemade setup but i'll drop the coffee grinder and the show in i don't know if i should drop those in the same place i don't know where i'll drop the show i gotta learn this there's like 80 channels i gotta i'll figure it out i'll find something (laughs) uh but there you go neil smith coffee update for you oh one more question um you said you were working on ratios what ratio did you sell on oh god i think i'll drop (laughs) that too it's like a i don't know a bunch of teaspoons to 24 ounces of like eight teaspoons to 24 ounces that sounds ridiculous i also have a a press that i use so i I boil the water and then i put the grounds and i I do like a little french press but i'll drop that on that channel for those who are interested cool cool cool. sweet all right uh thank you neil uh hello b wood you You have a question b wood it could be about anything under the sun absolutely anything completely your call but what's happening b wood hello hello b wood hello well, while B. Wood gets that up and running, uh, just a heads up for the podcast this week. The plan is we're going to talk about Warrior Wear Move It again. We're just a Warrior Wear focused podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about Star Ocean, the second story, R, the remake, which I'm very excited to talk about. Uh, Jeff, going to be talking about Robocop. Um, I think we might end up talking about Modern Warfare 3 because I think Kyle's actually ended up playing that a little bit, even if the rest of us don't have a code yet. But B. Wood, if your mic's not working, last chance. All right, we'll catch you next week. Don't worry about it. But hey, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Oh, Nick S., I see you. I see you, Nick S. We'll get you in here real quick to close things out. Um, Hello, Nick S. Hello. Sorry, real quick question. Yeah, what's happening? <laughs> get you guys out of here. Sure. Um, Any plans on doing a Spider-Man 2 uh, Max spoilers? Yes, great question. Um, Not 100% guaranteed, but it's on the schedule for this week, just so you know. So maybe stay tuned towards the end of the week, and it'll be up. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I have so many notes about that game. I'm excited to to dive in. And uh, oh, it's so much fun. I platinum did already. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> Janet, you think we should, should we do spoilers for just the main story, or should we? You, real... We got to do the whole thing. Got to do the whole thing. Okay. I, I do think we should though say like. And well, I think maybe we we'll can figure it out. It. I think we will try to stamp. Yes, we where, should. Split it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we might. Uh, we'll debate it, like, because I do think it's a game that you should talk about the entire thing, like, if you platinum dick kind of situation. Sure. But at the same time, we will figure out a way, I think, to communicate that to yeah. the audience so that they are aware that they are opting into a completionist run spoiler yeah. potentially. And I'm guessing maybe we put some of that completionisty stuff. At the end, yep. I just think that's the way to do it. Easier. Though it is a little silly to be like spoiler alert for the spoiler cast, but no, I think that's the way you, know, you got to do it. I, get I think it. you got to do it. 
Um, okay, cool. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for supporting Party Chat, unlocking the show each and every week. Uh, get ready for The Deepest Dive Part 2 for Ellen Wake 2. That's coming up next week. We'll be collecting your comments soon. Uh, and hey, we'll see you next week. Haley, Janet, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thanks fun. for having me. Absolutely. Uh, and goodbye, everybody. Um, we'll send you Twitch folks over to Next Lander. They're playing Astroneer. People are still playing Astroneer? Oh, is it out on Switch now or something, I think? All right, go enjoy. They just got acquired by somebody. Oh, um, yeah, that recently. does sound familiar. Was it Devolver? Yes. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's yeah. in honor of that. All right, thanks so much, folks. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.